wild rabbits. These small furry mammals were introduced to the Australian continent in the mid-19th century and have since multiplied at an alarming rate. Their soft brown fur and twitching noses may seem endearing, but don't be fooled. These creatures are one of the most invasive species in Australia. With their insatiable appetite and prodigious breeding, they have caused significant damage to the country's ecosystem and agricultural industry. But how did these small, adorable, yet destructive creatures invade such a big country? Well, in 1859, a wealthy man named Thomas Austin brought 13 wild rabbits from England to Australia. Within a few decades, the rabbit population began to explode, and by the early 1900s, there were an estimated 10 billion rabbits in Australia. Since then, their overpopulation and the damage they inflict on agriculture and nature have been a major concern for the Australian government and farmers. Back then, these rabbits did not have any natural predators in their new habitat. The climate and vegetation were also suitable for their survival and reproduction. The rabbits were able to reproduce quickly, and within a few years, their population exploded, causing significant damage to crops and the natural environment. As a result, Australia has been trying to find appropriate solutions and countermeasures to control its rabbit population for over a century. To control the rabbit population, the Australian government initiated a series of control measures, including the introduction of predators, such as foxes and cats the use of poisons and traps, and the construction of rabbit-proof fences. These efforts were largely unsuccessful, and the rabbit population continued to grow. From building fences to demolishing their burrows, everything has been attempted to tackle the rabbits. Biological controls, such as introducing viruses, have also been implemented, but unfortunately, none of these efforts have been fruitful. These rabbits seem unstoppable as they are adapting rapidly and reproducing rapidly. Female wild rabbits start breeding at just five to six months old. These feral females give birth to an average of four litters per year, each containing around seven to ten kits, or baby rabbits. But don't be fooled by their small size, as these kits can quickly adapt to their environment and spend most of their time living in burrows until their mother feels it's safe for them to come out. They feed on their mother's milk for about four weeks before nibbling on solid foods and becoming independent as soon as they are weaned. With an estimated 287 million wild rabbits living in Australia and 177 million being born each year, it's no wonder these highly adaptable animals can be found anywhere in the country where there is grass to burrow. In the wild, young wild rabbits are constantly on the run, trying to avoid becoming a tasty snack for predators such as dingoes, feral cats, or crows. It's a harsh reality, but only a fraction of Australia's wild rabbit population is taken down by predators each year. After about four to five weeks, these resilient rabbits are weaned and begin their own independent life. They can make a home just about anywhere in Australia, from suburban backyards to vast hillside fields. However, they tend to avoid areas with a lot of clay and sand, such as the northeast of South Australia. If you're wondering where these highly adaptable creatures thrive the most, Look no further than New South Wales, Queensland, and Victoria, which boast the largest wild rabbit populations in Australia. New South Wales alone is home to a whopping 65 million of these furry, fast-breeding creatures. The vast number of feral rabbits in Australia has resulted in various harmful effects on the country's ecosystems, including the reduction of vegetation and natural grasslands due to overgrazing. A single wild rabbit can render an entire lawn at an international football field unable to grow grass. Adult wild rabbits weigh around 3.3 pounds and need to consume 7% of their body weight every day. The burrowing behavior of these rabbits has led to severe landscape erosion and destruction. Australia's wild rabbits are not only a threat to the ecosystem and agriculture, but also compete with native animals for habitat. The sheer number of wild rabbits, which is 11 times larger than Australia's human population, has put 322 species of flora and fauna at risk costing the government more than $250 million annually. Despite various measures implemented to manage their population, wild rabbits continue to be a major problem in Australia, posing a significant challenge to the country's biodiversity and economy. The wild rabbit problem in Australia has prompted the government to adopt a range of measures, from allowing unlimited hunting to organizing rabbit hunts to curb their numbers. But that's not all. 
Biologists are also researching viruses that can be introduced to drastically reduce the rabbit population. In the 1950s, the government introduced the Myxoma virus, which had been discovered in South America and was known to cause disease in rabbits. The virus was initially very effective in reducing rabbit numbers, but over time, the rabbits developed immunity and the virus became less effective. And in the 1990s, a new virus, known as the Calisavirus or rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus, was introduced to Australia. This virus was much more effective than the Myxoma virus in controlling the rabbit population, and it led to a significant reduction in rabbit numbers. But even though Australia almost got rid of all its wild rabbits at one point, they have bounced back in numbers, making it an ongoing problem for the authorities and farmers. Similar to the wild boar issue in the United States, the wild rabbit problem in Australia poses a significant challenge to the government and farmers alike. Despite these measures, the invasive species continues to take a toll on the ecosystem, along with other species, such as feral cats. Speaking of feral cats, did you know that there are approximately 6.3 million feral cats roaming Australia's vast landscape? These felines also have a massive impact on the Australian ecosystem, with millions of them killing around 1.1 billion mammals, 399 million birds, and about 93 million frogs each year. Shockingly, it has been found that each feral cat kills an average of 740 wildlife annually. With their relentless hunting, they threaten over 100 species of native animals in Australia and have already caused the extinction of several ground-dwelling birds and small mammals. As a result, many endangered species, such as the pangolins and bandicoots, have seen a sharp decline in their numbers. While trapping and hunting are currently the most common methods used to control this invasive species, the problem of feral cats continues to persist in Australia, along with the country's wild rabbit problem. Feral cats and wild rabbits, both invasive species, pose a grave threat to Australia's ecosystem. These cats hunt native animals, leading to the extinction of certain species and a decline in biodiversity. Meanwhile, wild rabbits compete with native animals for resources, overgraze vegetation, and cause soil erosion with their burrowing habits. The rapid breeding of both these species makes it challenging for the Australian government and farmers to manage their populations. To tackle these challenges, effective control measures need to be implemented to mitigate their impact on the environment and native species. So what do you think? Do you believe more should be done to control the wild rabbit population in Australia? Are there alternative solutions that you think should be explored? And do you believe that the wild rabbit or the feral cat is a more significant problem in Australia? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more informative content.